Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, welcome to be my guest today. We have from Milford up the street, Cornerstone at Milford. We have Christine Matier, and she is the community community relations director, and Kathy Staropoli who is the Enriched Life Director over there. And what I had read, they have a wonderful event coming up. And this is going to include Coastal Mountain Railroads. Now, some of you may like railroad trains. I love them. And this sounds like a blast right up here at Cornerstone, right off of Route 140, right? Girls, welcome. Thank you. How, first of all, how did you get interested in working at Cornerstone? Oh, well, I actually um, came from an education background. I had been a teacher and uh, thoroughly enjoyed, you know, dealing with children and, well, uh, older adults, younger adults, they were high school and college age, and um, was ready for a change. I was teaching at Dean College and was um, not able to get a full-time position there, so did a total career change, and honestly, I just found my niche. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I still do many of the same um, outreach educational kind of programs that I um, always loved when I was a teacher and I do it with an audience that is incredibly receptive and grateful and gracious and um, yeah. and I love it so the cornerstone from what I'm reading Christine and Kathy that it, it's just uh, tons of activities this is to keep these people really really and this is going to be believe it, we're all going to get there someday what a great way to live and it what? really is, that is exactly the idea, is yeah. to keep everybody as engaged as they possibly can be. And we really do try to run the gamut. We have everything from physical activity, we do exercise programs every morning, we you know, provide spiritual programs, there are things like communion, and we have a rabbi come in to celebrate the holidays, and we have various religious affiliated groups do various programs. That's we so have, important. Yes, we have um, intellectual, we have things that are just fun, we mm -hmm. do things related to um, the arts. Um, we did poetry reading this morning. We're going to the Museum of Fine Arts next week. We do a, a large variety That's of things. We really try to, you know, find something that somebody will have enough that people will find something that they like. Christine, how did you get involved with Cornerstone? So I've been in healthcare for about four or five years and um, I started off in hospice and then went into home care and having worked in home care I had a relationship with Cornerstone um, and when I had found out our who is now our executive director, Beth Patris, was moved up to the position she previously was in my position, um, I had a great interest in coming to Cornerstone because my prior experience having been in healthcare, I knew the quality of the programming, I knew the quality of um, the education, both professionally and for the residents that they provided, and mm -hmm. it meant a lot to me to be someplace that um, could provide that kind of quality to the community. I don't. We have a neighbor who had. Um uh, major surgery up at Milford and he went over to Cornerstone to rehab and I think he thought it was great it was really good I mean you don't doesn't mean you're going to live there but you can be there for some rehab too right yes so we actually do um, offer respite which mm -hmm. um, we're a little different than other communities that way our respite um, we don't have any minimum so most places when they have a respite it's a 30-day stay yeah. um, with us you can come in for a weekend you can come in for a couple weeks people come for different reasons sometimes it's because they're they're doing rehab um, other times they come because they want to try it out and see if this is the right fit for them um, so it's a good way to try it out with without making that full commitment. And that is a fantastic idea. You know, I hear so many places like, well, once you put your money down, you've committed. You're allowing people, a person to come in, right? and say, I think I'll try this out. I'm going to put my toe in the water and I'm going to see if I'd like right. it. And of course we try to encourage people to do more than just a weekend, though they could if they needed to do a weekend, but we'd encourage them to do a week or two weeks or even longer just because you really get a taste of the flavor of the community sure. and what we provide. Yeah, And it takes longer before you really sort of try to immerse yeah. yourself. If it's a very short period, it's harder to get a sense of it. Now before we get into all the wonderful things, uh, besides what we're going to talk about over Cornerstone, somebody talk about this open house coming up. 
Yeah, Somebody tell us. Well, we're very excited. This was Kathy's idea, so I'm, I have to give her full credit. It was a brilliant idea. We're having this for a couple days. One day is going to be strictly for our residents, and then the other, the second day, which is November 12th from yep. um, 10 to 4, we're having an open house to encourage people to come in to the community to see this because there are those of all ages. It doesn't matter if you're oh, yeah. young, if you're a senior, um, those who have a passion for trains and, yeah. and the sort yeah. would truly appreciate this sort of event. So we um, decided to make it into an open house to also encourage people to come and see the community because often people have a stigmatism of what a, a, a skilled nursing facility is versus what assisted living is and we want to show people they're very different. That's so true because a lot of people in the baby boomers, Gen Xers, a lot of the, us the younger than our parents and grandparents had this, unfortunately, and back in the day, it wasn't so hot. You walk in there like, oh my God, is this it? This is all there is? Not anymore. Yeah. And I remember what it was like <laughs> when my grandmother was in a nursing home. Yeah. And it's a very oh. different experience. Yeah. And assisted living really is, yeah. it's a, a an entity unto itself right. that really has right. so we're a very great opportunity for yeah. people. It's like a new dignity recognized. Yes. It really is <laughs> about exactly. yeah. maintaining your dignity, maintaining your independence. As and much as possible. As much as possible mm -hmm. and having a good quality of life. Um, mm -hmm. And we know that a lot of our residents aren't going to be able to get out and drive. So mm -hmm. Kathy does a fabulous job bringing all of the programs into our community as well as our Compass Director, which is our memory care neighborhood as well, mm -hmm. um, bringing in all different kinds of activities, as she mentioned, you know, whether it's physical, spiritual, um, musical, crafts, the, the, um, we have speakers come in, yeah. we yeah. have yeah. It just educational, right? right. There's a, there's a real, really nice variety. And then yeah. we go out as well. Yeah. We have the van and, you know, we have a weekly trip to Target so yeah. they can mm -hmm. stock up on what they need. How about the thrift shops? <laughs> start, these, these places are going to start coming up with this because a lot of people coming up the ranks going to say, we want for shops. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a way to save money. Yeah. yeah. I love great stuff. Now, yeah. the so Coastal Mountain Railroad event, Sunday, November 12th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., right up here. If you're not from the area, you're out of the town, out of the state. Uh, it's in Milford, and it's off of 140. You take that, it, there's a sign, it says Corner Star, right? You go all the way down, and you can't miss it. It's actually on 109. It's on 109, 109 yeah. It's just off 109. On, I usually go off 140. You can. Through the woods, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You, that is the easier way to go. I went to a yard sale, indoor sale, one time many years ago. It was like yeah. a, like, I don't know, a craft sale. We truly have like a, an amazing location where we are because we're right off 495. Right. It's very convenient. Yes. And so right through the center of Milford, you know, no matter where we are, I mean, if you're coming from Franklin or no matter where you're coming from, it's a great, great location. It's yeah. very easy How access. How old is Cornerstone? How long has it been It's going to be four years um, in That's January. Right. Right. Oh, it's still so young and you're already doing so many things. So I'm just wondering about the Coastal Mountain Railroad. I wonder if you're going to be meeting the uh, Worcester Model Railroaders group. They were with me for years. If they would be on the show, and they're quite a bunch of guys. Over they may very well be coming to visit. I don't know. Oh, all right. Yes. Well, now we're going to remind everybody about that. But if you have any questions about this coming up, who would they connect with? They could contact the community directly um, at five zero eight four seven three zero zero three five. They can call, but it's an open house, so that nobody needs to RSVP. They're welcome just to come. But if they have questions about what the day looks like, yeah. um, you know, we're going to have appetizers and Ooh, fall food. refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be fun. All based, you know, appetizers and drinks. So oh, good. Uh, it's going to oh. be. A, we're looking forward. It's going to be all a fun ages, day. The kids all ages. ages. The sludge, a lot of the little kids love the trains too. Oh, yes. yes. This is perfect. It's like um, you're thinking of you know, Santa's railroad or something. Like yeah. This is perfect. And they're taking up an entire room. We yeah. have a creative arts room, and they're taking up the entire room to fill up with the train. So it's not like it's just going to be a little tiny train set. No. Yeah. And they're, they're they're setting up for the better part of a day. Oh, yeah, to make sure everything's ready and in its proper place. So it would take longer with all those trains and connections. I have a feeling they've done this a few <laughs> times, so they've got it down. They've done it. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to get into. Why? Let's see. Tell us about Cornerstone Open House. Why you're having it? Why someone should come? So again, I, the big thing is really we want to encourage people to come um, because we want people to understand that assisted living is not what people tend to think it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more about being a social model where skilled nursing, people get the two confused, often think that we are a skilled nursing facility. We are not. This is a place that people go that maybe just need a little bit extra help in their life. Maybe it's just you know having their meals prepared for them or someone reminding them to take their medications. Yeah. Um, it's a social model, so it's about giving them the best quality of life, bringing in those quality programs. Um, 
and again not unlike a skilled nursing facility you know we don't have the, the med we're not a medical model um, so we do have rehab that will come to our community but it's not going to be intensive rehab like you get in a, in a sure. skilled nursing right. facility. Do you, you have nurses on board though right? Yes, okay. seven days a week we have right. one to three yeah. nurses in our community. Is there an Alzheimer's section? There is. Yes. We, this. we mm -hmm. have a memory care community yeah. um, we call it Compass and um, we have shared apartments as well as, they're actually more companion, not shared, um, companion apartments and studio apartments. And we have specific programming just for what we call MSN, which is Memory Support Neighborhood. A companion, a par what a great way because I would assume, I don't know, I hope I don't ever have to know, but with Alzheimer's, what a great idea to have somebody else in the room with you as your companion who might be able to nudge you a little bit if you need to do this and that, or maybe at a different level? Am I making, I don't Well, know. our apartments are a little different than some communities. Our apartments, um, what the families like about the companion apartments is that they have their own separate bedrooms, own separate doorways, and their own separate bathrooms. They're completely, so they share a common walkthrough space yeah. where there's a fridge. Um, so uh -huh. it helps oh, keep oh, the cost more effective for some families. That would have been families. great in college. <laughs> Boy, I had, to bring, I had to bring my old little fridge. Did you guys have to bring a little fridge your own mm -hmm. I remember my parents lugging that thing up the stairs. <laughs> yes. It was one of those little square jobs. Right, right, right. I wanted one in case I woke up in the morning and I wanted some juice before they opened the cafeteria. Right, I right. said, I'm not going to go with And those are the kinds of things that we encourage people yeah. to put in, especially more so in the memory support, to have those kind of like drinks available. Not so much food because all of their meals are provided. Right. Yeah. Now, what, wonder what is it? We talked about assisted living. What is the ideal, ideal resident at Cornerstone? It's typically somebody who um, needs some assistance, mm -hmm. and it may be, you know, they're they're not going upstairs and sleeping in their bed because they're worried about, you know, climbing the stairs, or maybe they're not cooking the way they mm -hmm. used to because, you know, they forget to turn off the stove, or they worry they're going to forget to mm -hmm. turn off the stove, mm -hmm. or they're becoming more socially isolated. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get out. They can't. They can't see the people they used to see. Many of the neighbors have moved away, so they really are, you know, less social, less inclined to do some of the things. They're worried about right. slipping in the tub, yeah. so they're just sort of washing up. It's when people start to feel that they can't continue yeah. to perform their typical activities of daily living yeah. that this is the perfect opportunity for them to come. They can maintain all kinds of independence and honestly they can come in and if they're capable and they want to, they can make their own beds, right. they can do their own laundry, good. you know, yeah. they can drive their own cars. We have residents with cars. Oh, good, you can have a car drive. there. Right. They are yeah. in and out to stores, the library, yeah. visiting friends and relatives. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you do worry about slipping in the tub, you can have somebody there when you take a shower. Right. A lot of the kids, like, you know, like, uh, like I don't know, our age group, whatever, but like our parents and that type of thing, you worry, like, is it time for mom or dad to right. maybe reconsider? And more often than not, a lot of the people that we see that come in to visit our community are there because they're concerned about the safety of mom or dad. Yeah. A lot of them are taking their parents in, and um, they're not home with them during the day, and they are concerned, are they eating right? Are they taking their medications? So mm -hmm. some of it, for the children's perspective, it, or the nieces or grandchildren mm -hmm. is that they're safe and that somebody exactly. is overseeing them. If we, our, our residents are our family and yeah. if we don't see them at a meal, we're going to be knocking on their door to find out, are you okay? Are you is okay? everything, are you do you need anything? Right. That's what happened with my own father. Um, he insisted on being, you know, taking care of mom and everything, running the show. I was absolutely overwhelmed when I walked in and found he was so sick. He was living on boost. You know that stuff? Right. Like, right. Yes. And I'm like, have you eaten? Right. And he didn't sound like a... I still say to this day, if they had gone into assisted living, I think Dad would still be... He's tiny, he's both, but he would still be with us today. I'm not so sure about Mom. Right. But I think he would have been. But he was going down with the ship, and he did. Yeah. I have to share a recent testimony that one of our residents' families gave. Obviously, I'm not going to share names, but the um, resident... Um, sh the, the, the daughter shared with us that... Um, the resident's fairly new, been with us for a couple months, um, and went to go visit her doctor, who she's been seeing for 20 years. She's in our memory support neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And went to the doctor, and the doctor said, I cannot believe the difference in how you look, because I've never seen you look so good and so healthy. Mm -hmm. But it's just that extra support, you know, getting the meals, 
you know, making sure the med management is there so they're taking their medications when they're supposed to. Socialization is oh, it's key. Huge. It's key. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes make no isolation. Difference. That's, that's no. like toxic. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it makes all the difference. And yeah. we really focus on the Mediterranean diet and the brain healthy diet in our I, community. Yeah. And I bring that up because socialization is the base of our pyramid, you know, and the base of what's important. It's about socializing, about talking, you know, communing with each other. And without that, um, you know, like you said, you start to isolate. And the more you right. isolate, the more you isolate. I think the, the, you have a nutrition, uh, plant based Mediterranean diet. Didn't you? Did you have, or do you have upcoming? An event about we this. I just recently had a brain healthy okay. cooking event right. um, we offer to the community we do a brain healthy cooking and we talk about what does it mean to be brain healthy and have the Mediterranean diet what does that look like but we also do a, com um, a program that we bring out to the mu community called cooking for one it's brain healthy cooking for one and our chef comes out and actually prepares meals and, and samples oh. of things for people to try so because people think that because something's healthy it's not going to taste good yeah I don't want to eat a plant off the ground <laughs> <laughs> right, but what what they find is that it actually tastes really amazing, and they mm -hmm. can do this on their own yeah. affordably. So that is our goal: is to make our community a little, you know, healthier. So we bring that out to the public and to our professionals. We're talking with Christine Materi, and she is the community relations director over at Cornerstones at Milford. And we're talking with Kath, Kathy Staropoulos. I got that right. She is the enriched life director over there as well. Now. What makes Cornerstone? I'm already beginning to hear all the things so different from other assisted living places. Um, I think we have any number of things. I think our big is one of the big things about our community is that we're really about innovation mm -hmm. and moving forward. Um, we realize our residents still, again, having quality of life. It's not about just existing and, and just being there and participating in activities, but knowing that you can still grow as a person. Um, so we really focus a lot about um, increasing what our residents do and bringing in education for them. We have a program called Reconnections. Um, and can you you could probably What's explain that? reconnections even better the idea is we have um, a PowerPoint that is presented over the course of three days mm -hmm. and the information builds on itself and there are visuals and there is text and then there are questions and then you you know progress and do a little bit of review from the last day and then increase the information that you add on the next day and yeah. then you do some more review and then increase the information on the third mm -hmm. day and it really oh. is striking what is how many people will remember yes yeah. even yeah. those who have you know lost a lot of short-term memory right. sure. will still be able to go to it. come up with this sort of thing and that's that what's you did so a few amazing days ago. That it's not just in our traditional assisted living we do this in our memory neighborhood as well is that we know that even though we have memory impairment or we're getting older we can still learn new things yeah. and grow yeah. um, so that's a big part of who we are um, as well as we are always about you know discovery right. um, I have to say our parent company and our own community it's really about doing the right thing we really put the resident first they put the employees first I tell yeah. people all the time you can walk into any community that's new yeah. they're all beautiful the new ones are just they're gorgeous but at mm -hmm. the end of the day you really need to look at what are the staff doing mm -hmm. what are the residents look like Do, mm -hmm. is everybody engaged does everybody look right, happy sure. and you'll see that in our community Again, how can they reach you about all this? You can give us a call. You can call myself, Christine, at 508-473-0035. Um, but we have an amazing staff, so if I wasn't there, any one of us, right. like, literally right any one of mm -hmm. us could yeah. pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Or, and you can just stop in if you don't want to make an appointment. It sounds like you both really super enjoy this. We do. I love you know, my I job. I mean, they're radiating this right love here. love my job. Yeah. I yeah. feel like I... Don't go to work. Right, it's fun. You're going to play. It's fun. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, really what's a one of the best questions that they gave me to ask is, what is a regular day like for a resident? What's it What's it like? Well, you'll start with breakfast, and you'll go down, and you can have what time? Whatever sort of. Anytime. Well, you have a time frame that you can go in. I believe Anytime. it. Yeah. It opens at about 8, and then you can get breakfast whenever you are hungry. How about and they'll 11 your eggs. <laughs> We <laughs> have, we do end <laughs> breakfast, and typically by 9.30, 10. By 9.30? And then they'll still, you can still get some cereal, you yeah. can get a muffin, you can get whatever it is you like. Lunch starts at 11.30. Oh, my God. So if you want breakfast at that 11, you can, you can typically wait a little bit and then have your lunch at 11.30. But um, we start every morning with exercise. 
We have a different exercise program do you have rotating to? throughout the day. Not everybody's nope. into morning exercise. Absolutely not. <laughs> but like that's how that's the how, how the day starts yeah. as far as what's on the calendar. Yeah. Because it's a good way to sort of, you know, get people up and ready and energized for the day. Yeah. Then we'll have a program today. Um, we did poetry yesterday. I had a TED Talk on TV that we watched and then we talked about um, we can play word games, we can play card games. There's all sorts of things. They'll go to lunch afterward. We typically have some sort of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Almost every other day. Yeah. And it's it might amazing be. entertainment. Like yeah. sometimes it's an educational piece about, you know, what was the music like in the 70s and what were the composers and different things like that. Or it's literally some amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing entertainers. Yeah, that we have a gentleman playing um, classical music on our piano this afternoon. Um, on Monday, we had a speaker who talked about um, ghost traditions here in Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, it's Bergeron. I think he was over at the Milford Library. Adam Bergeron is the one who's playing today. Yeah, yes, I feel like I saw him at Milford Library. I yeah. watch Paranormal Investigate. Oh, I love Lockdown, and I love that. Oh my God! Oh, that. That's John Horgan doing the paranormal stuff, yeah. or doing the the talk on the spooky Halloween type thing. Yeah. Adam Bergeron is a classical pianist. Yeah. He's one playing today. Um, and we have everything in between. Yeah. There are, we do games, we have crafts, we have um, more intellectual sort of, you know, crossword puzzles and word searches. And Any book clubs? We do. We actually have an audio book club. Really? We found that uh, a reading book club was difficult because trying to maintain, you know, everybody's interest over the course of several weeks when right. memory gets to be an issue. Sure. And some people don't read very easily it's it's hard for them we enjoy the book together yeah. we can talk about it when we want we just stop it we discuss yeah. we have um, a great time we're reading glass castle right now What's well actually we're listening to is it that a, is that a fiction non-fiction that is non-fiction Jeanette Walls actually mm -hmm. wrote that as her autobiography oh. and they recently um, released the movie yeah. starring Woody Harrelson so we are going to watch that when we're done with the book yeah. oh and we that's also, a treat yeah. mm -hmm. we also have a walking club um, so what we try to do is when our residents or somebody new comes into the community is really to find out it's not just about what are your um, diagnosis like what yeah. not just about your health but who are you what are your interests? What are your yeah. interests in? Like? What Balance. are your passions? What you, yeah. you know, what are your passions mm -hmm. before you got to this stage of your life? You know, what were the things that you love to do? What are the things that you still love to do? And if we can bring that into the community and we find others, then we want to bring that into what we do every day yeah. or right. into part of our schedule. Right. We have two raised beds out back. We have this beautiful patio area. It's just gorgeous. There's a gazebo. Yeah. There's the woods. It's beautifully landscaped. And we plant flowers and vegetables every year. Yeah. The residents go off, we take them out, and they decide what flowers they want to plant, what vegetables they'd like to put in, and then we enjoy them yeah. for the about entire summer. Cornerstones at Milford. <coughs> it's located in Milford. Right up, we're in Upton right now, but it's not far from here, right up the street near 109, 140. I mean, you could get there probably by alien spaceship. It's in such a great location. Um, what was I going to say? When you go for walks, do you have to go, do you go to the walking place in Milford? What's that Blackstone bed? What is that? Oh, the trail? No. We no. actually have a path and a sidewalk that um, encompasses the grounds. Okay. It's a third, it's of, a a third mile. of a mile. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. And we have, um, you can go out the back door, yeah. and we will often take the loop around, and if people are getting tired or they need to stop and rest, they can stop in the front of the building. Yeah. There are chairs. They can go back mm -hmm. into the building. Those who are capable continue on. We have residents that walk it two, three times a day. Oh, yeah. We have yeah. residents that get outside and make the effort, get halfway around, and it's been a big accomplishment for How them. How about medical transportation? Not just to Milford, but if somebody right. wants to go out to Worcester, will they provide it? We have um, a certain radius that we will go mm -hmm. to, and we do schedule van appointments two days a week, and then the rest of the time the van is used for different activities, like she's going to the trips Boston Museum have. and okay. different trips that so they have. So you have to schedule you. Let's say if yep. you went to UMass, you'd schedule your appointment around the van. Yeah, as long right. as, the, right, within okay. a certain radius, absolutely. Right. You right. know, yeah. we also have a hairdresser, as most do. Oh. You know, hairdresser, she al they also Manicures. do manicure and massage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And massage. and massage. Yes, we have yeah. So it's included in. in the price of living? That's extra. That's the extra piece if they want because yeah. a lot of people, there are certain par parts of your life you don't want to give up, and one of them is typically your hairdresser, and the other is your doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so though we have people who come into our building, like you know, nurse practitioners and podiatrists. Um, you know, it's really about choice. Yeah. And if somebody wants to use the what services we have available to them, they're welcome to do that. If not, they can go and use the people that they've been using for, you know, however long. 
Do either one of you have a favorite activity you love to get involved with with the people who live there? I have a lot, but you talk about yours because yeah. oh, look at her. Christine, <laughs> Christine actually, <laughs> Christine is not somebody who would typically run programs. Yeah. That's pretty That's much her. my job and my assistant. But because she is very, very clever and creative, she does do a craft program with the residents. So we just started doing that, and I've been doing it for about a little over a month now, a month yeah. and a half. And yeah. so every two weeks, I've been going in and doing crafts with the residents yeah. and trying to do something of quality that they, they can be proud of, but also um, that they can handle that isn't too complicated. Because right. as we age, you know, sometimes mobility of our fingers and things mm -hmm. like that, um, it's a little more difficult. But it's been so much fun because yeah. I get I get to know the residents even yeah. better, because, right. you know, which is a great experience for me. Have to you heard of the Octoband? We've had the lady no, who invented no. it. It's the um, Nancy, gosh, I... It, it, it's like these, you know when, when you go into physical therapy, those long yes. rubbery yes. strokes? Okay. Yes. She made something that has a circle in the middle, and it's great for people who are having, you know, different issues with memory or whatever. They sit in a circle, and they each get a hunk of that octoband so that they're all together pulling together. The huh. messages oh, nice. were working together. Working together. Wow. I can look up octoband for you and send that. Because That's great. Thank you. I love that. Wonderful. That sounds I'm wonderful. wonderful. I'm going to write that down for you. Um, she's terrific. Again, now, the event coming up is when? November 12th, it's a Sunday from 10 to 4, and uh, we welcome everybody, all ages, whether you're interested in assisted living or not, we encourage you come to come because the, yeah. the trains are going to be fabulous, and the fall um, appetizers and drinks are going to be wonderful as well, um, so it gives everybody a little sample of what we are. And it's uh, what, is it on a Saturday or something? It's, it's a, a Sunday. Sunday. Oh, so, oh, wow, okay, so 10 to 4, so if you're not a morning person on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> Uh, you can wait and go in the afternoon. That's right. That's right. And there'll still be food. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Our chefs food. will be there preparing all day long. And we are a scratch kitchen, so yeah. what's really great about that is like all the food is very fresh, so what people are yeah. going to be experiencing is what our residents experience every day. So you don't need anybody to help bring any food for no. you or anything like that? No. no. We got it. When's your next fundraiser coming up? That's important. So I'm working on a couple right now. We actually are sponsoring um, or co-sponsoring a blood drive this Friday mm -hmm. with Milford Hospital. They do it with the Red Cross. Um, so we're encouraging people to go out and donate blood, especially with all the events that have been in the news. Sure. Um, the other one that we do every year is stockings for seniors. And we ask people to donate um, any items. Um, we have a list of items. And what we do is we fill stockings and they go out to our neighbors. Oh. They're not for our residents. Yeah. It goes out to the neighbors in need. Um, and I believe, I forget how many we've given out in the past, but it's been a lot. Yes. It's, yeah. been, a, it's, it's a big been number. over 100, right. 120. Right. And every year it keeps oh. getting larger and larger. That's and it's great all the professionals in the area team up. Sometimes they drop a, sto a filled stocking off or they just. Yeah. And what's nice about it is that our residents um, fill the stockings. And oh, they get a chance okay. to op they get that opportunity so they're to volunteer doing something for somebody else. Do they get what do they get on Christmas Day or, or Hanukkah? What what how do they rig, rig that for the different religions? Oh well, for the most part, during the month we will have all sorts of um, we'll have a variety of programs, both religious and musical and spiritual and whatever. And then for the most part, a lot of people will enjoy their families over the holidays. Right. They'll, they'll leave. It's okay. They can go and stay with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Okay, before we close, one more time, how can they reach you at Cornerstones? You can Milford? give us a call at 508-473-0035, and anybody at our community would be more than happy to help. Let me tell you, this has been really enlightening. This is the, this is the wave of the now and the future. We are be they are beginning to make places like assisted living, even senior centers, beginning to rock and roll. Because I re I've told this many times, I remember well, a few years back, I would visit my parents and I'd see AARP magazine on their right. coffee table. Like, ooh, <laughs> that's right. not for me. Now what they do is they're very clever. The magazine, they had Paul McCartney on. They had all the different, <laughs> right. you know, in the 70s, 80s. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they know right. they're smart. Right. Why not? And right. even when you have clients who are probably in my parents' age, 80s, 90s, whatever, the kids, they're looking at this too right. from their point of view. And they're thinking, hmm, is, is this is good. This is coming down the pike. Right. This is so good. It's positive. And it's really about not just, like we mentioned, quality of life, but mm -hmm. having purpose. Yes. So no matter what age you are, you mm -hmm. always need to have purpose right. to feel fulfilled. And right. so it's our goal to help our residents, you know, remain exactly that dignity, that. the independence and in that. Before we close, do you find many of the residents make friends really well there? Yes. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Just very important. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. it's it's just really wonderful to watch. They, they're they concerned about each other. They yeah. look out for each other. They take care of each other. They really enjoy each other. It's a, it's a so really it's a warm a and wonderful community. The oh, residents are just great. They really are. Thank you, both of you, for Thank doing you for having me back us. on again, because I know there's many, many things coming up in, in Cornerstones at Milford, all right? Thank, Thank you. I don't want people missing out on this. <laughs> all right. We'll see you next Thank time. Thank you. Viva, I guess. Thank you very much.